What if I told you that there are 50,000 children and young people in Australia that have experienced childhood trauma? How do I know? Because there are 50,000 children and young people living in out-of-home care. So what is childhood trauma and what is out-of-home care? Well, picture this. Baby is born, baby is loved, but baby's mum has mental health issues and baby's dad has a drug addiction. Baby cries, baby isn't sleeping, baby cries, baby isn't being fed. Baby is loved, but mum and dad don't have the skills or the resources to cope with a baby. Baby cries, baby isn't sleeping, baby's stressing mum and dad out. Baby cries, and then one day, baby stops crying. Baby's learnt that when he cries, nobody will come anywhere. This is childhood trauma. So baby's placed in out-of-home care and grows to be a child living in a series of foster homes with a series of foster parents. The child wants to believe that if he tries his best, does everything he can to please the adults around him, never cries, then maybe he won't be moved again and maybe things will start to work out. But it seems like no matter how hard he tries, he keeps being moved and having to start again anyway. The child learns that there's no mu not much point in asking for help and there's not much point in trying. Eventually, the child stops trying. This is childhood trauma. So at the age of 12, child's told that no foster family can have him and he's sent to live in a residential with other problematic teenagers. He hates being told what to do by the youth workers. This isn't a family and this isn't a home. He starts spending more time on the streets and gets caught up in petty crime like shoplifting and jumping trains. And then one night after a particularly hard week, he decides to sell a 20 to get himself some money for some takeaway. He's caught by police, handcuffed and taken to juvenile detention. This is childhood trauma. Without a family there to advocate for him, he spends the next couple of years bouncing between juvie and resis. At the age of 18, he's exited from the child safety system with a criminal record and a 10 grand spur debt to go with it. He has no education, no community connections and no support. He doesn't know how to rent and before long he's homeless. His heart is heavy and he doesn't know how to make it stop. He wishes he could ask for help. This is childhood trauma. So when I first started working in the resis, I was told I'd learn a lot from these kids. And that's true, I did learn a lot. And today I wanna to talk to you about three things that one young person, Sam, taught me. But I don't wanna talk about what Sam taught me about out of home care, or necessarily about what Sam taught me about childhood trauma. Today I want to talk about three things that Sam taught me about life. So he was 12 or 13 when I first came to work at his resi, big tall kid with bright red hair, very confident but very reserved. And one day I arrived on shift and I was told that Sam's mum, who hadn't seen him for a couple of years, had requested contact. So Sam and I jumped in the car and we travelled to the meeting spot. We arrived and we waited, 10, 15, 20 minutes. After about half an hour, I started wondering what I needed to say. But before I could say anything, Sam spoke. He said, I don't think she's coming. There's some things I can't control. This isn't about me. It is what it is. So a couple of months later, Sam was telling me about one of his tattoos. It read, I'm given this life because I'm strong enough to live it. I'm pretty sure I'd seen that saying before somewhere and it hadn't meant much, but on that day, Sam taught me what it meant to him. 
he told me. Life is like a video game. We start with the easy levels, and before it can get boring, we've got to level up. All the shit in my life, I know there's a point. I'm leveling up. He continued. That's why we can't take other people's pain away either. Like the shit with my mum. She's leveling up too. Sam wasn't ignoring his pain and he wasn't considering himself a victim of his pain. Sam had taught himself to make meaning from his pain. So <clears throat> Sam turned 17 and discussions started about exiting him from the child safety system. I was wondering how he felt about being out there on his own. So one day I asked him, Sam, how are you feeling about being alone? He looked at me quite amused and he told me, Diddy, I've always been alone. We're all alone. And then he clarified, together, we're all alone. So maybe before today, when you thought about psychological trauma, you associated it with returning military, military veterans, like your PTSD. We look at our vets and we respect them for what they've been through. We consider them strong. We call them heroes. Well, like our vets, our children and young people in out-of-home care have been through battles that we cannot even imagine. Research shows us that trauma changes the brain, and that might be true. But being trauma-informed does not mean calling ourselves the experts. These young people haven't just learnt about trauma or researched it. They've lived it, and they've survived it. Research shows us that trauma changes the brain, and that might be true. But being trauma-informed does not mean that these kids deserve to be seen through a lens of pathology. So what do they deserve? They deserve a child safety system that recognises that baby was always loved and maybe with some support and resources for mum and dad, baby's story probably would have been different. They deserve care workers and teachers that realise that for some kids, learning their times tables is not the biggest thing on their mind right now. And maybe what's more important is teaching these kids that they are valued and they are respected, and they can cry, and they can ask for help. They deserve a justice system that doesn't look at survival and poverty and desperation and consider it criminality. They deserve a community that advocates for them, that offers op opportunities for employment and accessible, affordable housing. They deserve research that stops looking through a lens of pathology and starts looking at concepts like adaptability and vicarious resilience as well. They deserve us to realise that there are 50,000 children and young people in Australia living in out-of-home care. And if we give them the space to tell their story, we'll realise that actually they're heroes. Thank you.